Gilgal Christian Center, where burdens roll away. Let's go straight to our message today. I'm not going to take too much of your time. Uh, pay great attention. Uh, Pastor Pat, Revelation chapter 2, verses 12 to 16. Quick, please. Angel of the church in Pergamos, write, mm -hmm. This thing says he which has the sharp sword with two ages. I will see why it's underlined. That's where we are still standing on. The one with the... Sharp, sharp sword, sword and two ages. ages. Don't forget that. Go ahead. I know thy works mm -hmm. and where thou dwellest, mm -hmm. even where Satan's seat is, mm -hmm. and thou holdest fast my name and hast not denied my faith. Mm -hmm. Even in those days wherein Atipas was my faithful martyr mm -hmm. who was slain among you mm -hmm. where Satan dwelleth. Mm -hmm. But I have a few things against thee. Because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, mm. and to eat things sacrificed unto idols, mm. and to commit fornication. Mm. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of Nicotelians, which thing I hate. Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will fight against them. With the sword of my mouth. Amen. Amen. Remember, we're still on the third letter, which is the letter to the church in uh, uh, yes, Pecamus. But the introduction to this letter, that's where we are still on right now. The one with the sharp sword with two edged, uh, the one with um, with two edges. With two edges. The sharp sword with two edges. I said last time, I said, what is the meaning of that? Because it's important to get the introduction right. The Lord introduced himself differently based on the situation these churches found themselves. For this church, of course, in Pecamos, which is to us today, he introduced himself as the one with the sharp sword with two edges. And we've been on this for some time because we need to get the introduction. If you do not know the God that speaks to you, you will not understand the message. That's why the introduction is very important. And that's why we've been dwelling on this. We found out that the same God of mercy, you know, these days and age, we only look at God as the God of mercy, the God of love. That is what is being preached now all over the world. Because we, you don't see why a God of love, a God of mercy will send anybody to hell. There's no reason why the God of love, the God of mercy will punish anyone. So you know what? We are using that to justify what we do so that we think that it does not matter. But I come to tell you, just like uh, this letter to the church in Beckham said, it said, God said, yes, I'm a God of love, a God of mercy, but I'm also a consuming fire. Oh, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Which means that the same God as a God of love, the same God as a God of mercy, is also a God of judgment. And we said that the consuming fire of God does three things. Quickly. He said that the fire of God is against impurities in your life. And we talked about this already. Number two. We said the fire of God is against idols in your life. Last week we dealt with this. What are idols? Those things that you place above God. Not necessarily those shrines. Those are one of those things. You go to bow to shrines. Some of us, we serve God in the day. But at night, we serve Satan. Some of us, we go to church to pray and fast. When things are not working out the way we want, we call spiritualists in Africa. Send them money to see the future for us. They will ask you, bring this so that we can do sacrifice and you will send. 
But on Sunday, you are in the press team. You are one of the workers in the church. You are dancing to the Holy Ghost. Now you need to understand that you are serving idol. You are not serving God. I don't know if I'm speaking to someone today. Idols are those things that take the place of God in your life. That job that you will go over time and everything, but you will not remember to go to church. That money, you save and save, but you do not spend this money to do the work of God or to help the poor and the needy. That spouse, that husband of yours, that wife that will tell you, why do you need to go to church two, three days a week? You need to be at home. The friends, these are idols in your life. And I come to tell you that the fire of God it's against idols in your life. Number three, the fire of God is against unrepentant enemies. Say unrepentant enemies. Today we're going to deal with this briefly so that you can understand. Shout hallelujah. Now let me tell you this. Don't allow anyone, any pastor, any prophet of these days to lie to you to deceive you that God loves your enemies more than you. I want that to sink in. Don't allow anyone to deceive you because God is a God of love. God is a God of mercy. In other words, God loves my enemy more than me. Uh -uh. I serve God diligently. I rise up to pay the price and do the work of God. I go through persecutions and all sort of things in my life. And you are coming to tell me that God loves the enemies that want me down more than he does to me? I, I'm not the God that I serve. I'm not the God that I serve. Let me get that out of the way. Second thing I want to get out of the way. When we say enemies, so that you can understand. Your enemy is not that person that doesn't like you. Maybe somebody gossips and you hear, my enemy. Somebody you go to ask, ask for loan. She refuses to give you. Oh, that's mine. You come to church and walk in with your fancy shoes and the person look at you anyhow and you happen to catch that person with the corner of your eye and say, aha, did I not tell you? That woman is my enemy. No, that is not the enemy we talk about here. Mm -mm. That's not the enemy. Somebody says, I can't stand this person. You say, ah, oh, fire God, deal with her. That's not your enemy. So I want to get this out of the way. So you understand the kind of enemy that we talk about here. Okay? Somebody slaps you. That's my enemy. No, that's not your enemy. You bless someone and they refuse to show appreciation. Ungrateful people. No, those are not your enemies. Mm -mm. Those are not the kind of enemies that we talk about here. So get that out of the way. All right? That is important to clear that up. Because these enemies we talk about, are people that are using demonic means to hinder the fulfillment of your destiny. People that are fighting tooth and nail to make sure you do not amount to anything in life. People that are standing as stumbling block to your breakthrough. These are the unrepentant enemies in your life. In other words, they fight your destiny. They are angry for the stars upon your head. They are angry for what God wants to use you to do. And they want to make sure that thing, that destiny, that glory does not shine. These enemies could be witches and wizards, evil personalities, family authors, agents of darkness uh, that willingly allow Satan to use them and they are everywhere today. 
even in the church. I don't want to go into, into teaching deliverance today. You realize it's something. There are people that will sit in the church like this, but they are not coming there to worship God. They know they are on assignment to quench the light, even in the church. And they know you might see them physically as human beings. They are human beings, most of them are. But you need the spiritual eyes to know this person is being used by Satan. Not that they don't know. They willingly accept to carry out. Because the more destruction they do, the higher they get in rank in their covenant. They are everywhere. That's why you need to be very careful. Let me not scare you. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. <laughs> no, I, I wanted to make that, get that out of the way. Amen? Mm. Now that we have fully established that God is a consuming fire, look at what the book of Hebrews says. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 30, what is it? It is a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Dreadful things. What is the meaning of the hands? To fall into the hands of God. It means to incur the wrath of God. To dare God. To toy with what, has, with what God has dedicated or what has been dedicated to God. To challenge the authority of God. That is what it means to fall into the hands of God. He said, the Bible says it's a dreadful thing. It is a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of God, to incur the wrath of God, to challenge the authority and power of God, to toy with someone that has been ordained by God, to toy with the destinies that have been prepared by God. It's a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of God. Make no mistake about that. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Because of our time, if you look at um, the book of Daniel chapter 5, the story of King Belshazzar, this was the son of King Nebuchadnezzar, he took over from the father. You still remember King Nebuchadnezzar? This story is found in Daniel chapter 5. Let me paraphrase. The Bible says, this king you know, King Nebuchadnezzar invaded Jerusalem and took away the things in, in the temple of God. The things that were dedicated to God in the temple. The golden utensils. All those stuff. He took all those things away into Babylon. And when the, you know, when the son took over as the king, the Bible says... In Daniel chapter 5, that the son went and took all these golden utensils, the things that were dedicated to God, and started to do merriment with prostitutes. Number one, he used these golden utensils that were dedicated to God from the temple to drink, to party, to have fun with prostitutes. That is number one. Number two, not only did he do that, while he was doing that, he was giving praise to Baal. He was giving praise to Satan, using the things that were dedicated to God from the temple of God to give praise to Satan. Uh -uh. What an abomination. What an abomination. And the Bible says, the anger of the Lord was kindled. Say, anger of the Lord. Lord. Tell somebody, say, anger of the Lord. Lord. Today, the anger of the Lord is still kindling. Make no mistake about that. You can live your life anyhow. The enemy can think that God does not hear. God does not listen. The enemy can say God is a God of love. He will not do anything. But they are mistaken because the anger of the Lord is still kindling against unrepentant enemies in your life. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. 
Mm. The Bible says a hand appeared on the wall and wrote on the wall. The finger of fire of God wrote on the wall. Job on your feet and say today, I call upon the finger of fire of God. Of fire of God. Arise. Arise. Against the enemies of my life. Against the enemies of my life. Oh, finger of fire of God. Oh, finger of fire of God. Ride the obituaries. Ride the obituaries. Ride the obituaries. Ride the obituaries. Of unrepentant enemies. Unrepentant in my life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. You may be seated. Ah, that same God is the same today. Uh -uh. If the finger of fire of God wrote the obituaries of Kim Shasha, and the Bible says God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, would that same finger not write the obituaries of the unrepentant enemies in your life? Uh -uh. If God did it before, would he not do it again? The Bible said that he's a God of precedent. If he did it before, he will do it again. Oh, shout hallelujah. Uh, does God change now? Has he changed? Will God change because of me? Will God change because of the U.S.? Will God change because of all these so-called prosperity motivational pastors? Because that's what they want us to hear. Uh, God cannot do that now. Uh, uh, God love. Uh, uh, but He did it before. So has God changed now? Ask uh, somebody. Has God changed now? So why would somebody come and tell me that God cannot do that? I have personally witnessed God moved as people confess and as they finish confessing, they fall down and die. I've seen that happen several times. I've seen in the Bible, some people say this was Old Testament. What about New Testament? Do you still remember Peter and Ananias and the wife? You still remember? They, by the way, were Christians. This was after the Holy Ghost had come down. But what happened to them? Uh, 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 no, no, what happened to them? So if it happened that time, would it not happen today? Which kind of theology are you guys? That somebody will come now because this is digital age and tell you, no, God cannot do that. But he did it before. So God, God will not do it now because we have, we have internet. No, tell me. God will not do it now. I don't like anybody to deceive you. The Bible says the finger of God appeared on the wall and wrote, Mene, mene, take care of a sin. We are not going to die. When you go, go. You see the interpretation. But the, but the bottom line is that after the interpretation of the writings on the wall, the Bible says, Kimber Shasha fell down and died. Today, I prophesy unto your life. Any unrepentant enemy must fall down and die. Mm. Listen, First Peter chapter 2 verse 9 says that you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people from his own possession that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Therefore, as a child of God, you belong to what? A royal priesthood. You are from a royal priesthood. You are a peculiar person. You have been sanctified 
and set aside for the use of God, God takes particular interest in your welfare and safety is God. He guards you jealously because you are dedicated to him. That makes you his what? Property for his exclusive use. He is not interested in sharing you with another master. It also means that God will react forcefully against any power that attempts to defile you. And when he reacts, the consequences are not always pleasant. If you doubt me, ask him, Bersesha, when you see him, if you see him. Meaning that as a child of God, born again, blood washed, you have been dedicated to God. You have been sanctified by God for his what? Exclusive use. He's not ready or paid to share you with any other power. And therefore, any power that attempts to defile you must incur the wrath of God. That's what it means. And that's why you need to know that, who you are in God. The problem we have is that most of us, we don't know who we are in God. We just go to church, Go and sing. We make church look like a party hall. We turn church into something to fulfill all righteousness. Oh, because my parents used to go to, I was born in the church. So I need to go to church to identify myself with church people so that people will not think I'm a pagan. And that is why that is who most Christians are. They don't even know that they've been sanctified by the blood of the Lamb. They've been set aside for the exclusive use of God. And therefore God is not going to share you with any other power. He will not share with any other power. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. That has to be at the back of your mind. This is what we call revelational knowledge. Without this kind of knowledge, you can't succeed when it comes to God. Without this knowledge, the enemy will still toy with you because he will ask you, who are you? And you don't know who you are. If you don't know you are the son or the daughter of President Biden, believe me, you cannot claim the benefit that comes from that office. You must know first the son or the daughter of who you are. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. That's why God guards you jealously. Mm. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Number two reason is that when King Bezer used that cup to praise Satan, something happened to him. Using the holy cups in a drunken feast was enough as an insult to God. But using them to pray Satan, that was more than God could bear. He had to show that he is God. This was like sharing the glory of God with Satan. What an effrontery. God says, Isaiah 42 verse 8, I am Jehovah, that is my name. And my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise unto graven images. Then that's thinking. My glory will I not give to another, neither my praise unto, unto graven images. Isaiah 42 verse 8. So Kimber Shesha used the thing dedicated to God to give praise to graven images. Do you think God will just keep quiet and allow what is, what is his to be used as a thing of praise to Satan? Think again. God is ready to defend his honor without regards to the repercussions. So many destinies, listen to me, so many destinies have been, have been captured by Satan. Do you see, God created you and given you a destiny, a glory 
for his glory and praise. In other words, God expects that the glory has given to you to be used for his praise, for his honor, for his worship. That is why you carry the glory. That's why you carry the star. It's for the glory and honor of God. But when Satan captures your glory, it means that the glory that was meant to be used for God, is now being used for Satan. And that's an insult to God. It's like giving glory of God to graven images. And God will not take that. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So many glorious destinies that have been commandeered and caged by the enemy. Look at Samson. You still remember Samson? A powerful glory was commandeered by Satan and used for his own glory. What is sad, a sad situation. Some people are used, abused. Some, some are beaten and battered. Yet many others are, are hammered and bombarded on every side. And it appears God is not listening. But let me say this to you. God is not ready to share his glory with any man. Everything in life has their limits. The enemy may appear to have succeeded for too long, but if you continue to call upon the God of judgment, a day is coming when your enemies will need God's, will read God's handwriting on the wall. That day has come for your enemies today. I say that day has come for your enemies today. Shout hallelujah. I don't even know which other one I want to go because of our time. Look at the other way how God would deal with the unrepentant enemies in your life. Look at 2 Chronicles chapter 20 verse 15. Remember the story. This story when the evil people concerning King Jehoshaphat and the people of Israel when the people of, of Moab, Ammonite, Mount Zia, formed a confederacy they gang up against King Jehoshaphat and the children of Israel. This was a powerful force. They came together to bring down King Jehoshaphat and the people of Israel. They even boasted, don't think that your God will deliver you from our hands. Go and look at the other countries that we brought down. Did their God deliver them from our hands? That is the way the enemy boasts when he tries to capture your destiny. He says, I'm coming against you. What can you do? What can your God do? Look at that person I destroyed. Look at the other family member I destroyed. What did their God do? What makes you think? Our own case, you are God will be able to fight against us. Wait and see. That was what they were saying to King Jehoshaphat and the children of Israel. What can your God do? Today, they will see the power of your God. I said today, unrepentant enemies will see the power of your God. Oh, shout hallelujah. Mm. The Bible says, God told King Joseph, he said, look, relax. You see this battle? It's not yours, but it's mine. God is telling you today, relax. I don't know what you are going through right now, listening to this message. God is telling me to tell you, relax. Say relax. relax. Say relax. relax. Say hold your peace. Because God is fighting for you. Because the battle is not yours. It is the Lord's. And God is an expert when it comes to fighting his own battle. Oh, shout hallelujah. Mm. Because of a time, the Bible says, God took you, if I say, don't worry. I'm going to take over this battle. One of the ways God will deal with your enemy is to cause confusion in their camp. Say confusion. confusion. Say confusion. confusion. Sometimes God will not even allow anybody to die, but he will allow 
when confusion enters into their camp, their weapons begin to turn against them. The enemies begin to fight against themselves. Jump on your feet and declare, today, confusion has entered into the camps of our enemies. I command them to turn against themselves. I command them to turn against themselves. Turn against themselves. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hey! In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Holy Ghost. Amen. You may be seated. The Bible says, God set an ambushment. Confusion entered. You know what they did? They started to fight themselves. They started. Instead of fighting the prophet Israel, they start fighting themselves. Today, your enemy will start fighting themselves. Today, the weapons of your enemies will grow back. When, oh my God, I want you to get that revelation. God will not have to do anything with them, but the same plan they have against you will turn against them. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That's the God that I serve. The Bible says all of them start killing themselves. They start killing because confusion entered and they start destroying themselves. That is one of the ways God, the judgment fire of God will fight against a repentant enemy. They start destroying themselves. The third way that the judgment fire of God will come against your enemies is when it, it empowers you so much that no weapon fashion against you prosper. Oh, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Say, no weapon fashion against me hallelujah. shall prosper. Ah, do you understand that? Yeah. That is the third way God fights against your unrepentant enemies. God will empower you so powerfully that no matter what they do, the Bible says they will come one way and flee seven ways. They shoot their arrows. It will not penetrate. Whatever they do will not come to pass. Why? Because God is with you. Oh, shout hallelujah. That is the third way God fights against your unrepentant enemies. Come on, your feet. Our time is up. There's a lot we can say. Let me, thank you. Amen. Amen. Let me release you to go and eat. Because some people are looking at me and say, ah, this man. Is he gonna continue till 2 p.m.? <laughs> Amen. Just wave your hand to your Holy Spirit. Say, I receive today my healing. I receive today my deliverance. I receive today my breakthrough. The favor of God is upon me. The blessings of God are upon me the glory of God is is upon me and my entire household in the name of Jesus Christ I soak you with the blood of Jesus and with the fire of the Holy Spirit this month shall be a month of miracles for you a month of testimonies for you a month of breakthrough for you a month of healing for you in the name of Jesus Christ Thank you, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Gilgal Christian Center. Gilgal Christian Center, where burdens roll away. Gilgal Christian Center, a deliverance and prayer ministry.